Hi, I'm Andrew, and today we'll be reading Wake Up Woods, an exploration of spring wildflowers, also known as spring ephemerals. These are wildflowers that exist in the woods that are usually around in early, mid, and late spring and early summer. So come along with me as we search for these small beauties. Wake Up Woods, illustrations by Jillian Harris, text by Michael Homoya, verses by Shane Gibson. Bloodroot, Sanguinaria canadensis. Bloodroot red, a quick flash of light, up this morning, gone tonight. Name for its blood-colored sap. Bloodroot plants arise from the ground in early spring before leaves emerge in the trees above. These plants, like true spring ephemerals, take in the sun's vital rays while they can and store energy for the next year's growth. Small native bees pollinate bloodroot flowers, but they don't have much time because each plant's flower is short-lived, often lasting only a day or two. After bloodroot goes to seeds, eliosomes, food bodies, that are attached to the seeds attract ants, which carry the seeds to their nests underground. Some ants carry them as far as 40 feet away from the plant. The ants eat the food bodies, leaving the seeds underground to germinate and grow into new plants. Trout lilies, Erythronium americanum and Erythronium albedum. Dappled sun, mottled leaves, a solitary flower, a ray of hope for ants and bees in an April shower. Yellow and white trout lilies are common early spring wildflowers. They are nearly identical, except for their color. They look like a lily you might find in a flower shop, just much smaller. Their thick green leaves are normally speckled, like the pattern on the kind of fish called trout. Now you see it how it's got its name. Sometimes you will find leaves that are solidly green. It's not unusual to see large colonies of trout lily plants with single leaves and no blooms. Watch for plants with two leaves, a sign that they have stored enough energy from the sun to produce a flower. The flowers are visited by a variety of bees, including one called the trout lily mining bee. Like many spring wildflowers, their seeds are dispersed by ants. Spring Beauty, Claytonia virginica, and cutleaf toothwort, cardamine concatenata. A toothache cure, radish hot, a root to eat? Maybe not. Spring beauty and cutleaf toothwort are two of our most common and wide-ranging forest wildflowers. Toothwort, wart means plant, is a botanical relative of radish and mustard and may have been named for either the jagged edge of the leaves, the tooth-like appearance of its buried rhizome, or its early use in treating toothaches. Spring Beauty's name says it all. It's beautiful and blooms for much of the spring season. At any given site, from the first Spring Beauty to the last, a period of two months may have passed. The pink stripes of its petals are thought to help direct insects to its nectar. The Spring Beauty mining bee specializes in gathering the Spring Beauty's pink colored pollen for food. Violets, viola family. Fritillary host or cupcake topping. Yellow, white, and purple. Color popping. Violet. Is it a name for a plant or a color? It's both, of course, but the plant name came first. However, the flowers of violets can also be yellow, cream, or white. Violet's distinctive flowers have two upper petals, two side petals, and one lower petal. Most are striped at their base, and some have hairy beards. Bees are the primary pollinators of violets, and the violet mining bee specializes in pollinating violets. A kind of butterfly, known as a fritillary, normally does not pollinate violets, but its caterpillars feed on their leaves. With few exceptions, if there are no violets, there will be no fritillaries. When the plant seed capsule is ripe and ready, it explodes! forcibly rocketing away the seeds to the ground where they can be dispersed by ants. Dutchman's breeches, Dicentra cucularia, and squirrel corn, Dicentra canadensis. 
When I dream a springtime dream and make my springtime wishes, a wood thrush sings eole and bees buzz among squirrel corn and Dutchman's breeches. Dutchman's breeches and squirrel corn are closely related. Their foliage and the way the flowers are arranged are so similar that they can be confused with one another. But look closely at the flowers and the difference is clear. Spreading spurs of Dutchman's breeches look like pants dangling from a clothesline. The spurs of squirrel corn are rounded and the blossoms are fragrant. Underground, squirrel corn has small yellow bublets that look like corn kernels. Dutchman's breeches have pink bublets. Native bees frequently visit their flowers and seeds get dispersed by ants that feed on the seeds' food bodies. Virginia Bluebells, Mertensia virginica. Bottomland of blue, sure looks delicious for a nectar-loving bee with a long proboscis. A forest full of blooming Virginia bluebells is a sight to behold. The best time and place to see such a spectacle is early spring in a forested ravine or a well-drained bottomland, flat land nearest river or stream. Named for their blue, bell-shaped flowers, bluebells stand about one to two feet tall and often form dense colonies. They usually have blue flowers, but once in a while, you can find a plant with all white flowers. This happens when a plant lacks typical pigmentation. Ants, a great number of native bees, and bee flies, flies that mimic a bee, all visit the flowers. Bluebells are true spring ephemerals, which means the part of the plant above the ground dies back after flowering and stays dormant until awakening in spring the following year. Wood Poppy, Stylophorum diphyllum. Yellow orange sap, Native American dye, few are as lovely as our native celadine. When wood poppies are in bloom, it's like having little bursts of sunshine arising from the forest floor. This beautiful flower, called either wood poppy or celadine poppy, inhabits rich, moist forests, especially on slopes and in ravines. Wood poppy plants typically grow in single clumps, not in large colonies like some other spring wildflowers. As with violets and other woodland plants, its seeds have food bodies, eliosomes, that attract animals, especially ants, that help spread seeds out in the forest. Take care not to confuse it with another similar looking relative called greater celadine, which is a non-native invasive weed in natural areas and has flowers smaller than our native wood poppy. Lesser celadine, another invasive weed, has more than four petals and doesn't look like a wood poppy. Trilliums, Trillium recurvatum and Trillium grandiflorum. Petals, sepals, and a whorl of leaves. Easy as counting one, two, three. Tri means three. When you think of trilliums, think the number three. They support a whorl of three leaves and a single flower with three sepals and three petals. In Eastern North America, there are over 25 species of trilliums, with flowers having petals that may be red, purple, pink, white, yellow, or green. Trilliums have two types of flowers. In some species, the flower is attached to a long stalk. In others, the flower totally lacks a stalk. Insects, including bees, wasps, and gnats, are the main pollinators of trilliums. Ants, mice, and wasps, and white-tailed deer eat the fruit and disperse the seeds. Mayapple, Potophyllum peltatum. Beneath the umbrella of a mayapple's leaf hides something tasty, a box turtle's treat. Mayapple is one of the forest's most easily recognized plants because they have large leaves shaped like umbrellas. Mayapples grow in colonies of mostly single-leaved, non-blooming plants. In May, or even earlier, double leaves invite you to bend way over and look for a single white flower with a yellow center hiding beneath the umbrella. Though they produce little to no nectar, bees and bumblebees do investigate and the bees spread pollen among the flowers. Its fruit ripens in summer to look like a small yellow apple. White-tailed deer, raccoons, and box turtles eat the apple and spread the seeds. Jack in the pulpit, Erysema trifilum. 
and Green Dragon, Erysema dracontium. In warming woods growing tropical and tall, bearing bunches of red berries that gleam in summer and fall. Jack in the Pulpit and Green Dragon belong to the Arum family, a diverse group of mostly tropical plants with unusual flower structures. In Jack in the Pulpit and Green Dragon, there is a tube called a spathe that encloses the club-like spadix. The spathes hide tiny flowers that cluster around the base of the spadix. Fungus gnats are common pollinators. The spadix is the jack of Jack in the Pulpit and the whip-like tongue of Green Dragon. Jack is often compared to a preacher in a pulpit. Green Dragon, with its long protruding tongue and wildly fanned leaves, brings to mind a mythical dragon. In late summer and fall, both plants call attention to their clusters of bright red berries. Some birds and mammals are known to eat them, but they are poisonous for people to eat. Wild Columbine, Aquilegia canadensis, and Fire Pink, Silene virginica. Columbine and Fire Pink, for hummingbirds travels, an essential drink. Very few woodland wildflowers are red, but there are two splendid ones, Fire Pink and Wild Columbine. Fire Pink, a member of the carnation family, has red flowers that stand out vividly among the white, yellow, and purple hues found in most forest wildflowers. Wild Columbine is also ablaze with color, but not with the same intensity as Fire Pink. It is mostly scarlet, but when combined with its inner circle of yellow petals, it can appear orange from a distance. Look for both in well-drained forest soils, especially on slopes and rocky outcrops. These two native wildflowers are visited and pollinated by ruby-throated hummingbirds, which shrink from the deeply hidden reserves of nectar at the tips of the columbine spurs and at the base of the tubular fire pink flowers. Christmas Fern, Polystichum acrostichoides. A fiddlehead, no strings attached, unfurled beauty springs here at last. Christmas ferns, like all ferns, have no flowers or seeds. They produce spores instead. While spores are not seeds, they have a similar purpose and are most commonly found on the undersurface of the fern leaf. A germinating spore will grow into a tiny, usually flat, green plant called a gametophyte. It is here where reproductive cells bond together and grow into a new spore-producing fern. In spring, each fern stalk emerges as a curled-up fiddlehead that slowly unrolls and expands to its full leafy form. Christmas ferns' evergreen leaves were once popular for decorating during the Christmas season, thus the common name. Wow, wasn't that exciting? And those are just only a few of the examples of the beautiful wildflowers you can see out this spring. I hope you make it out to explore the woods on your own, and thank you so much for watching this video.